uh, really good. Uh, kind of like uh, he's been he's been looking like that all all training camp. Uh, he just uh, his spirit is about winning. He's not about stats. Um, he just just plays plays the right way. He teaches our young fellas the the right things, and he's uh, he's great. He's been. He's been, he's been nothing short of spectacular on what he is, what he tells the guys, how he coaches uh, his, his teammates, and, and they listen to what, he, what he's done and how he prepares and how he trains and how he looks at the game. It's, it's, it's priceless what they will, um, all the young players are going to be thankful in 10 years, they're going to realize what he's done for them. And then secondly, uh, Thomas Bryant had a big night. It seemed like maybe a preview of the role he'll have, uh, you know, playing as the sort of a secondary scoring option. A lot, lot of buckets to be had, huh? Yeah, I mean, he played well. There's going to be some nights, uh, the thing about with, with Russell, if you run and, and you get to your spots, uh, he's going to find you. And so there's going to be nights where TV gets 25 or 30, and there's going to be nights where uh, Brad's going to get 25 or 50, and there's going to be nights where Russell gets a bunch of points. And uh, but we got, we're getting better players, and minutes are going to be hard to get. And you guys are going to be fighting for them. And you're going to, we're going to raise the level of our play. And it's, it's, it's fun to, it's fun to see because I'm seeing them right in front of my eyes. And you guys are competitive, and, and they, they're going to go in there and they're going to play hard. It's, it's not about, not about the 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 quality or the quantity of your minutes. It's about the quality. And the guys are going to realize that and and play play much um, play harder. Chris Miller, even though you don't have a suit on tonight. Oh, you got jokes tonight. All right. Hey, Matt, um, these are jokes for me, Matt. Yeah. You know, it's comedy hour with Scott Brooks. All right, Manny. All right, here we go, Scotty. Uh, you started Denny two of the three preseason games. Are you ready to name a starting small forward for the game against Philly? Uh, not yet, but he's definitely um, he's definitely working his way to being a starter one day. I uh, don't know when that will be. It might be um, Wednesday night, uh, but he's, he's played hard. He's tough. He has great size. Um, and he's going to make us a better team. Uh, I think he He's done things as a starter. He's done things as a as a coming off the bench um, in a short pro career now with three exhibition games. But he's making a good case. There's no question. You know, he got ten rebounds for you tonight. Getting ten rebounds from the small four position can only help this team moving forward. I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a thing that's been our Achilles heel for a while in that last season. Um, it's just the way you know we we change things around. For the better, and, and we knew that we were going to have to get bigger and, and, and get some some added toughness and some bigger players and some more athleticism. And we got the best rebounding point guard probably in the history of the game. Uh, and then and Danny, when he you know he's on the court, he's a big rebound. He has a nose for the ball, and he's not afraid to get it in there. He's not afraid to get dirty. You win with guys that have that lunch to tail uh, mentality, and he does. He's a he's a he's a he's going to be really really. Fred. Scott, what, what did you think of the way uh, Russell and Brad worked off each other in the 10 or so minutes that they shared the floor? Um, great. Um, I like the fact that they were they were looking for other players and not just, you know, playing, you know, back and forth. Uh, Russell's going to find whoever's open. He's going to make the right play. And Brad's the same way. Uh, but there's there's time in, in the game where you have to look for certain players and, and they know that as well. And that's why the transition has been uh, two and a half weeks has been seamless and, and it's been great. And, and I think it's going to continue that way because they both are about the right things. and They compete. And like I said, these guys are going to benefit from their their professionalism. Was was that an easy decision for you to stagger them? Or, or were you on the fence with it and that's what you went with? No, I mean, I, that's what I do. That's why I stay up and stay up and wake up in the middle of the night, figuring out ways to, to get the best 
combination of guys and, and on the floor and we, we talk as a group. Um, we talk, I talk to the players as well. Cause you want your players to feel comfortable. You got, you got really two high, high level all-star players that can make all of our players better. You want them to feel comfortable. You want them to be at their, their, their peak during the game. And, and it's still a little bit of a, um, tinkering back and forth, but I would like to keep their minutes, um, you know, not not as high as they probably would like, but it's, um, I thought it was good having them stagger tonight, but Russell only played, you know, 17 minutes or so. Neil? Hey, Coach. Uh, Davis hit his first shot, but then went 0 of 6 from the rest of his uh, shots tonight. You think it's just an off day and generally how did you like in the few minutes that he played today? Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm gonna have some conversations with Tommy. Maybe we can make a move and get back a shooter. Um, I'm not worried about that. He's, that guy, is, he's money. He's just, I mean, he hasn't, he didn't play um, you know, a lot of basketball this summer just to be trained by himself or one-on-one -on -one with one of his coaches. Um, this, he's been five on five just basically for a week now. So it's going to take him some time. But he's, I'm, that's one thing I'm not worried about. He's, he's, a, he's another winning basketball player. And the thing that I love about him, and I didn't know, I said it many times last season when I talked to Pop when we made the trade, is he's more than a shooter. He's proved that all year. And he's got rewarded for that. He's got rewarded for being uh, more than a shooter. And, and he's going to help us in the other areas when he doesn't have a good shooting night. But very rarely he's going to miss six good-looking threes. I thought one was uh, one was a tough one, but I thought the other five that he missed were really good. Ava? Hey, Coach, uh, sorry, Scott. I was late again, so someone already asked this. Just blow – I know, I know. Just blow past me. But the, th the three-guard lineup with um, Neto and Ish and Russ, how did that come about, and um, how much fun did it look like those guys were having? Well, Avery finally got a good question. Thank you. Come late every time. Uh, I, although, Chris, yours was decent. Um, I thought it was great, and I thought Howu has been playing. I mean, he's obviously not our best player on our team, but he's one of our best players in town. Uh, Every practice, every 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 game, every uh, time he's on the floor, he just makes things happen. And he's about he's he's, he's as tough as nails, and he competes, and he chases, and he fights through screens. He doesn't. Um, very rarely is he behind because he's, he's engaged and he's locked in. He knows how to play. He's another winning basketball player that plays with toughness. My job is to try to find the minutes, and like I said. The minutes were handed out um, last year for the right reasons, and now we got we got some really good players, and they're going to be hard. And how you get from no minutes to few minutes is by playing hard and playing well and, and doing it every day in practice. And and my job is to find the best um, combinations on the floor. But that three that three guard lineup was really really good. That that, that gave uh, uh, Detroit some fits. Because they were, they can, they can all make great decisions with the ball. When you have three playmakers on the floor, with Brad uh, Ish, um, Russ, and Hau, and one of the one of them out, but those three out of those four, it's, it's another playmaker. I thought it was, I thought it, I thought we missed a lot of shots during that time, and we still made a nice run. All right, last question from Iran. Um, hi, Coach. Um... How did you feel about Denny's, uh, Denny Avdia's, uh, you know, confidence level as, as a rookie, his balance, you know, should he, should he be more aggressive looking for the shot or you, you think it's right where it needs to be? I think he, he has a pretty good knack for a 19 year old kid that just came uh, to the country on an NBA team. He has a pretty good sweet spot when, when to take the shot, when to make the pass, when the, when the drive. And that's sometimes that takes a long time. I mean, the game is still, I'm swimming, uh, I haven't asked, but I'm swimming. It's, it's going to be fast like all rookies I've had, and myself included. Uh, but I think he's done a pretty good job of finding that balance. And, and like I said earlier, 
and you can talk to Brad and you can talk to Russell. They've coached him. Uh, they coach him a lot. They're they're in his they're in his uh, year. And they they and then DA is with them all the time as a coach. And you know we don't we don't want a lot of coaches and a lot of players uh, telling them things. We just want to keep it real simple with them. But I, from for a young player, he's done a just a marvelous job of just staying within himself and making right plays. And that's how you're going to grow and be, grow with your teammates, making the right plays. Don't force anything. That's how you gain the respect by just continue to play hard and do those things. It was good. We won. It's the most important part. We um, I thought we had good pace, um, defended well. Um, you know, I like where we where we were tonight. And it seemed like you were building an early connection with Thomas Bryant. Like his game might complement yours pretty well. What'd you see from him out there? Um, he did a good job of being in the right spot. Um, that's it. I just challenge everybody to be in the right spot. My job is to make the game easy for everybody around me. Um, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. Fred. Hey, Russell. Um, the uh, the trade went down like after training camp even began. So so it's not like you had any amount of time to get to know guys. What what has this process been like for you guys, for you personally, just trying to get to know everybody in such a short amount of time before the season? It's actually great, man. I actually enjoy it because um, uh, we have a team where a lot of guys with a lot of different places uh, to me, which is very intriguing. And also, I get, I get a chance to learn a lot about who they are, they are bringing, uh, the things they like, they don't like. And to me, that's very intriguing. Like somebody coming in and being the leader, you get a chance to know guys' background. And you know, we got a lot of interesting guys on the team that have different journeys. We're all journeys to the NBA is totally different. I mean, that's, that's amazing in itself. And that's something that I uh, will continue to learn and learn about each of our teammates throughout the, throughout the season. Chris? Russ, um, it was very clear the energy in the beginning of the game. You can actually even tell it on television what you bring to the table. Uh, I'm interested when TB has that type of energy and you're kind of encouraging him also, how much do you think that stuff kind of feeds with the rest of the group? Um, I just believe that energy is always good, man. Win, lose, or draw. It's, it's a thing that you need to use. It's not something that, to me, it's not something that I do one night and do the next night. It's something I'm, that I've been doing since I've been in the league and uh, for the rest of my teammates, my job is to try to set the tone. First, having been ready to play. Uh, and as the game goes along, continue. The hardest job is to constantly keep that up regardless of what's going on um, in the game. How do you get yourself now locked into an opponent as much as what you've been doing the last couple of weeks of trying to integrate what you're all about, being consistent every day, now getting yourself ready for an opponent? Say it again. How do you get yourself now locked into Philadelphia? Oh, um, you know, um, it's like it's like playing Detroit tonight. We're gonna get to Philadelphia, um, figure out you know what they're doing, kind of if they still playing the same way, and if not, so be it. Honestly, my my approach is what about us? Uh, do what we do, and uh, if we do what we do at a high level, you know, they will have to adjust to us. We want to be the first team to throw the first punch. We don't want to get hit in the mouth first. So that's my mentality. Ava. Hey Russ, um, now that you've obviously played both with and against Brad in previous years in your career, I'm wondering what you've seen from his game, um, not necessarily in all that he's added in the past couple of years, but um, in, I guess, the uptick and aggression that you've seen from him. Have you seen that kind of side in him a little bit more, just willingness to take the shot, even if it's maybe not a perfect shot, something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, for Brad, for guys, that has been in position, got tough shots, maybe for him, but for him, those shots are something he worked on consistently, something that he makes at a high rate. Um, so we believe our job is to be able to make the game easy for him, find a way to be able to constantly feed him the ball um, so he's able to score at a high, at a high rate because he's, he's shown that he's able to do that. Uh, and he's going to be great. Uh, I'm not worried about Brad one bit. Uh, once he get his rhythm, uh, there's not too many people that can stop him from doing what he want to do. Neil. 
Hey, Russell, uh, noticed that you and Brad were sitting together um, on the extended uh, sidelines. I'm curious, how does that help with your guys' chemistry um, as you guys look to gel together? Um, I think it's important, um, not just on the basketball court, but off the court, being able to create a relationship uh, you know, with someone and understand their goals, their admiration, their, what he believes in. It's important. I always believe that and just create a relationship with anybody, knowing what they think. I really don't really care too much about myself or what I think of what's important to me, but I also want to always want to care to, to other people uh, and make sure that they're the most comfortable we can, because I, I, I can adjust to anything. Uh, and that's my main goal. All right, last question from Iran. Um, hi, Russ. Uh, how was it to actually play with uh, Denny, him being a rookie and you being in his ear since you joined the team? Uh, Denny's good, man. He's going to be good. Uh, my job is to make sure he improves throughout the season. Uh, being a rookie can be tough and have go through tough stretches. My job is to constantly stay on him as much as I can to challenge him to be great. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that. Really good job of just feeding off each other, of just adjusting, adjusting to how the other plays. And uh, the most important thing is just his pace and just his energy he brings to the, to the table. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to have to run plays if we don't have to. You know, we want to be able to get stops to get out of transition, be able to get some easy ones. So, you know, that's where he excels very much, and I excel there too. So uh, it just works out. You know, it works out well. You know, we just continue to play off each other, feed off each other. And, you know, we push each other, you know, 100% to continue to lead the team and be the best player. We've talked a couple of times about the young fella, but he added something to his game tonight, which is getting on the backboards, getting 10 rebounds. How much do you think that helps really the team when you can have a small forward get on the boards like that? It's important. You know, uh, it's funny. I'm telling Danny the whole game, be aggressive. Just quit trying to force me the ball. Because I, I catch him a lot just kind of staring at me, looking at me like he catches the ball, look, holds a lot. But be aggressive. Be a player. You know, you're in the league for a reason. Uh, you know, as the game will continue to slow down for him, he'll learn that and realize that. Uh, but he only has a split second when he has the ball. You know, so we're just, me and Russell, just trying to teach him that and keep him encouraged. But he, he finds other niches in the game. You know, he doesn't have to score 50 points. You know, he continues to stay involved and stay acclimated in the game with his collection skills. But tonight was rebounding. So, you know, he's 6'9", 6'10". He needs to be able to use his body that way and be able to get in that battle with him. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Congratulations on your event today, too. Thank you. Chase Hughes. Hey, Brad. Um, Thomas Bryant tonight, it seemed like this was a bit of a preview of the role he's going to play this year, you know, as sort of a piece alongside you and Russ and, and Davis. Um, what do you think about, like, the, the value he could bring to that role as sort of a secondary scoring option? You know, with the spots are, with the, with the shots and stuff like that. Uh, he, he did it. Uh, so, it's, it's, but it's just. Uh, you know, don't forget did. to mute your um, computers. Thank you. No, TB did a great job tonight. Uh, just staying, staying engaged in the game, you know, not being too emotional. But he was, he was locked in. You know, he was super locked in. He was, I would say after the game, last game. But, you know, he, he came out tonight with, with an edge, with an intensity that we need him to continue to play with. You know, he channeled his emotions and he competed. You know, that's all we need him to do. And, you know, tonight was just a gist of what he's capable of doing. Obviously, we all need to be better and more consistent. But, you know, he he, he continued to play, play his tail off like he always did. And, and we've seen you the last two years be obviously a big focal point of the opposing defense. You're dealing with a lot of double teams and stuff like that. It was, it was a, a brief glimpse of life with Russell Westbrook, but did you, did you notice a little bit of a difference uh, in terms of the attention of the defense? Yes and no. They still double me, which was, I didn't think they were still going to do that. Uh, but 100%, you notice the differences. You notice guys getting more open shots. I even got – I'm mad at myself because I turned down a lot of the rest through to me. So, you know, I, I can't I can't do those because I don't get many to begin with. So I got to be ready to, ready to shoot at all times. And all of us do. You know, we're, we're going to get a lot of open shots because of the space and his attack mode, you know, his attack mentality. Defenses have to respect him. So he's able to get two feet in the paint, and the rest of us have to do our jobs, get open and knock him down. Fred Katz. Hey, Brad. 
I, I remember you saying on a podcast like two months ago or so that you had kind of pushed back your off-season training routine, thinking the season was going to start later than it actually ended up starting. And then it took everybody surprise by surprise. I, I'm wondering, since I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you started with, with Drew around the second week in November or so. Uh, did you have to do anything different to accelerate kind of being ready for the start of the season, or did you still go through that same routine? I went through the same routine. I didn't do anything different. I didn't rush my workouts or like implement. All I gotta get two days in enough because that'd have been that'd have been me my rookie year. You know, constantly being in the gym, all that jumping and pounding on the body was horrible. You know, so I was still being smart. You know, I, I realized that it was a shorter time, but I, I'm more confident in my game, and it's, it's it's about working smarter. You know, I always work hard. That's not my problem. So I'm working smarter, you know, just taking care of my body, knowing what I need on the floor, knowing what I need to get better, um, and just continuing to, you know, push and perfect those things. I think it was a crazy offseason for everybody. I don't think anybody really got the full amount of work that they expected to get in, um, especially nobody. I don't think anybody really got a lot of 5-on-5 five five in either. Um, but, you know, we are where we are. Everybody's in the same boat. So you know, I feel good tonight than I did the other night. And it's just continuing to get better. Do, do you think uh, – I'm asking you to put your fan, your NBA fan hat on for a second, but but do you think that, like, the start of the season, just in general around the league, we're going to see a little bit of an easing, easing in period for a lot of guys because a lot of guys weren't able to play 5-5? Five five? Yeah. I mean, you're going you're gonna to see that. I mean, from teams who were in the bubble all the way, you know, down to the championship, you know, to teams who weren't there since March. I haven't played since March, so I'm hungry to get back out there. But you're going to have a lot of guys, a lot of teams who, you know, going to need their rest. They, I mean, this is the shortest offseason we've had in 70, what, 71 days. So it's, uh, it's, it's tough on a lot of guys, you know, a lot of, a lot of beat up guys from the playoffs and the bubble. So I expect a lot of teams to probably sit and, you know, rest their guys like they should. But, you know, at the same time, there are a lot of hungry teams, a lot of hungry guys like me who haven't played since March. So it's going to, it's going to be, it's be an interesting year for sure. On top of everyone being healthy. Last question to Ava Wells. Hey, Brad, um, just really quick, Scott has been telling us how um, Netta was one of the players that stood out most to him during training camp, wondering if he stood out to you as well. Yes, 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 he has. He, he does a tremendous job of running the team, running the offense, and then he gets after it. Like, he's a little pest. You know, he's, I always make fun of him because he has a strong build. He's resilient. He's, he's very you known for their strength. So he's very strong, uh, you know, and he can shoot. He can shoot the leather off the ball, you know, which is what I love about him too. So he has heart, he has grit, you know, everything that we need. You know, him and Richard are going to definitely compete. I mean, it's easy when you have teammates like we do, you know, people that uh, just try to work hard and try to um, play the right way. You know, I think we improved every every game on preseason, and and we got to a point that we're ready for for the season. We're still going to get better. Um, but I think I've been around and I've been around different teams, and I try to. Uh, uh, just do whatever the team needs on the court. If it needs to uh, uh, play with more pace or if it needs more scoring, I'll try to do whatever I can to help. So I think that's how I, I, uh, I fit so, so quick on the team. Chris Miller. Oh, well, how long will it take before you start telling your teammates about some of the Sixers players opening night, some of their tendencies to kind of help you guys opening night? I mean, I think as soon as we start uh, preparing for the game, you know, until now we're trying to get uh, or or defense or offense right, you know, just thinking more about us. I think that's what a preseason and training camp is, it's, it's about. Um, but now that we start focusing on the season and, and Philly, um, I'm definitely going to help them to understand personnel and what each player likes to do. I think that um, I'll try to help them um, you know, just just be ready for the game. But I think uh, everybody knows, everybody played against those guys, and, and I think everybody's going to lock in and be ready. Um, but I'll definitely try to help with some uh, small details. Fred? Hey, Dallas. Um, it's the first time you've played a meaningful basketball game in a very long time. How did it feel just to get out there and, and actually play a game? Well, I gotta say that uh, you know I've went through twice ACLs that I didn't play real final five for like nine, ten months, but this was tougher, man, because uh, 
you know, with that you're just building up to playing five on five slowly. And now with, the, with this summer, how it was, you know, I didn't, well, for the last three weeks, I was by myself in a the gym, then for like four weeks together with AP and then two and a, two and a half months, like almost two months before that by myself. And it's been, it's been an odd summer, but yeah, definitely. I could feel it. That it's a little bit tougher to play five on five with actual professionals. How how much five on five were you able to play over the last like three or four months? Uh, well, this week in practice, <laughs> and uh, before that, uh, basically nothing. Since you know, with with this summer, then uh, we didn't really have that many guys available back home, and uh, plus. I couldn't take any chances of uh, being a free agent of just playing five five and you know accidentally something would happen. So, so basically, it was just a lot of individual work during the summer. Chase, Thomas, what was it like uh, for the offense having Russell Westbrook out there? You know, did, specifically, did you notice a difference in how uh, the Pistons were able to defend Bradley Beal? Um, was I would imagine more attention was uh, on Westbrook than you know what you guys are used to. Well, definitely, I think you could see in the in the first half already how how many open shots we got, how many good looks we had, and it was all of I would I wouldn't just say Russ, it was just everybody. Like, he kind of set the set the tone for uh, driving and kicking, and then uh, everybody else started doing that. And I think we got so many wide open looks. You know, then he'll fall tonight, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to get better from here. Neil. Hey, Davis, I'm just curious, uh, in the limited amount of time that you were able to play, how you felt your conditioning was holding up? Uh, I think for like three, four minutes, okay. And then uh, when it was building up to like seven, eight in a row, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. But I think, you know, it's just, it's just something you can uh, gain in games. It's impossible to get that uh, game shape during practice. So it might take a week or two, but... Uh, I think every game can be better. Chase, Thomas, what what do you think about uh, Thomas Bryant's ability to complement the primary scorers on your team? It seemed like there were a lot of open shots for him tonight because the the defense um, was paying attention to other guys. Well, you know, with the with the skill level that we have uh, with Brad and Russ, uh, for him setting screens and rolling most of the time, you know, he's gonna he's gonna open up a lot of. Uh, Easy layup dunks for him, and at the same time, you know, he does it three times. He goes to the basket, and the fourth time he pops out. There's definitely not going to be anybody guarding, and uh, you know, he's able to knock those shots down. So it definitely helps everybody. You know, the, they keep the defenses uh, on their toes, and uh, you know, if he's going to start knocking those down even more, then uh, it's going to open up for everybody else, especially for Russell Brad.